likely use parts of the ruling to challenge the hush money criminal verdict. That's according to a source familiar with his legal team's thinking. The former president's lawyers could use the decision to challenge some tweets that were entered into evidence, as well as parts of Hope Hicks's testimony too. Now, she served as Donald Trump's communications director and testified about the campaign's reaction to allegations of his affairs. Thomas Bakusha is a former Connecticut Superior Court judge and the author of The Common Floor, and he joins us now. Thomas, great to have you on the show with us. I think there's good news and there's bad news in this because it's not all about Donald Trump, let's be clear. What it says is that no president is fully above the law on all occasions, but there is, as Caitlin was saying, an enormous gray area over what constitutes an official act, what gets absolute immunity, what gets partial immunity, and what's personal behavior too, and has no immunity. That's right. I think that uh, the case can both uh, delight some people uh, and disappoint others. And I think the important thing is that the United States Supreme Court has recognized that no American is above the law uh, and that in the instance that most people have been worried about, I think the Supreme Court decision means that the president can never be immune from using SEAL Team 6 to kill his rivals, his mistresses, or his former staff members with impunity. I disagree with the dissent uh, in its worry about that one, because I think the majority did not want to see immunity under circumstances like that. But this business of, uh, of core official acts, official acts, and unofficial acts sets up a subjective and vaguely worded in many ways uh, standard for the lower court to try and apply. And I think having judged many things like this under these kinds of standards, uh, you can make it come out any way you want, simply by uh, making everything official or not everything official or some things uh, intruding on the core functions of the presidency and others not. I think it's a uh, it's dangerous in the sense that it doesn't really give enough guidance about what's going to go on down below. I think that's one problem. And that's going to take time, to your point, to filter through what can be defined as a personal act acting in one's own interest. I guess the example in this case would be acts that involve trying to stay in the White House longer versus official acts that you take under the course of, of being a president. Um, I need your sort of prosecutor's hat in this case. If you look at all the accusations and the charges that the former president faces, irrespective of the time it takes to, to filter through this, what survives this judgment from the Supreme Court in your mind, whether it's an act or the evidence that a prosecutor would put forward as evidence of an act? I think the thing that they said clearly was out of bounds that he could not be prosecuted for are his uh, attempts to, alleged attempts to coerce the Justice Department into supporting his bogus fraud claims about the election. Uh, the court just said that is associated with a core function, instructing the Attorney General. Uh, it's out of bounds. He's absolutely privileged with that. Uh, and so I think that's one thing that they uh, clearly held that he couldn't be prosecuted for. They contrast that with his pressure on Vice President Pence with respect to the electoral uh, counting of votes and said that he might be, uh, he might be immune, he might not be, depending on whether a prosecutor could prove that prosecuting him for this interference would not interfere with the authority of the presidency, whatever that means. So they made one thing that's clear that's out of bounds. And they also added to that something that I uh, deeply disagree with, which is a decision to say that uh, it can't look at the communications with the Justice Department, even as evidence of the other potential crimes. So it's just right out of the case, and you can't, uh, in other words, see the whole forest uh, if you've taken some of these trees out of the way, and that's what they've just done. They've taken uh, that particular thing out of the case entirely. It can't even be used as background evidence of what was going on. And so every time the upper or lower court finds something immune, you can't even talk about it is what's suggested by the decision. And I, I don't think that's in accord with uh, with the traditions of criminal uh, prosecutions. Well, it makes uh, a prosecution's job that much more difficult in, in building a case, surely, and perhaps raises the probability that you drop a case or don't bring it in the first place. Um, Thomas, gut instinct, if the former president becomes president again, does everything go away? 
I don't think we have to think too hard about that one. Uh, the it's interesting because the court specifically identified uh, instructions and communications with the attorney general as something that the president is absolutely immune to. And I think we can all know for a certainty that his first instruction to the attorney general, if Trump is re is elected, uh, is going to be to drop this prosecution. It will unquestionably go away uh, if uh, Trump is elected president of the United States. And I think that would be a great miscarriage of justice. Thomas Bokasha, great to get your insights, sir. Former Connecticut Superior Court judge and the author of The Common Floor. Good to chat to you.